group, we've been looking at neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is basically your ability to lay down new patterns in your body. How well do you learn things? So when we think about improving our bodies, fixing problems, fixing our pelvic floor, fixing our core, fixing our breathing, whatever, all of the difficult ortho things that we want better, losing weight, getting fit, whatever that is, that's gonna come down to our ability to learn how to do something new. If you are good at learning how to do new things, you're probably gonna be more successful at whatever goal you set. So one of the things that I like to do is channel someone who's already good at something and think about how that person would handle the frustration or the situation. So let's pretend that we have three people who are showing up for a golf lesson. All right, they all want to learn how to play golf. All three of them have the desire to want to learn how to play. So person number one shows up and they have a tendency to overdo. They're gonna just hit the ground running. They're gonna want it all yesterday. Why isn't it already in their brain? They're gonna be easily frustrated. They're gonna be impatient. They're gonna have a difficult time focusing uh, and a difficult time experimenting. Because if you wanna to experiment to change little nuances of things, especially with micro movements within how the body is working, you've gotta be able to take a step back and have a little more of an open mind for that. And so they're gonna be a little obsessive, which obsessive in this way is good. We want somebody showing up, being a little bit obsessive for them to be able to fully learn a new pattern. You can imagine this person trying to learn how to play golf, right? It, it's not gonna go that well, <laughs> but they are going to attack it. So this person is gonna have a tough time learning a new pattern because they are a bit anxious, a bit frustrated. Person number two is gonna show up. They are very calm, they are very open. And so they can troubleshoot well because they're like, oh yeah, let me take a step back. Let me let me work through that a little bit. I, I They don't get anxious easily. They don't get frustrated easily. But they do get a little distracted easily because, you know, they, they want to work on something else or they, they want to do something else. And so they're not really showing up enough to see progress. So even when they show up, they do a good job but they're not really showing up enough to see progress. They need a bit more of that obsessive tendency uh, that they're just not bringing to the table. All right, so even though they're good at troubleshooting, they're still not gonna make the progress that they want because they're not showing up with enough consistency to get there, all right? So their actions are not reflecting their goal. Person number three, very calm, very open to learning. Obsessive in a good way. They keep showing up, they stay obsessive. All right, they're good at troubleshooting. This is important. They're open, they can troubleshoot, they can experiment, they show perseverance and they show grit. All right, when it gets hard, when it gets frustrating, instead of them getting frustrated at themselves or frustrated at their body, they take a step back and they show a little grit and they put in more of an open-mindedness to it and they troubleshoot. They get a new coach, they learn a new process, uh, they get feedback, they get help, they find a way <laughs> to persevere through the hard part so that they can come out at the next level. They are not easily frustrated and they are not uh, ready to give up. So you can imagine this person showing up for their golf lesson. All right, so you take all three of these people and we all have tendencies of each of these personality types or each of these approaches, whether we're not showing consistently, whether we're getting frustrated and wanting to quit. All right, so it, what we bring to the table is going to depend on our intentions and our focus. So in order for us to change something, we have to take a step back and we have to recognize how we're thinking. This is called a witness position. So if you are not looking in at yourself to see, okay, how am I approaching this? How am I trying to learn? You're never gonna go to change it, right? You're never gonna recognize that you're frustrated. You're never gonna recognize that you're impatient. You're just gonna keep not reaching your goals. So if you are not reaching your goals and you wanna reach your goals, I want you to think about someone. I want you to picture someone that has reached the goal you wanna reach. What did they do to get there? How did they approach learning? What did they try? What did they do differently? What set them apart and why did they reach it? Because remember, all three of these people showed up to learn golf, okay? But only one of them walked away actually knowing how to play. And so what I want you to do is think about that person, picture them and channel them to help you change and modify your thoughts, to help you become more aware of your thought process to help make you more successful.